If my life were to be summed up in a theme song, it would be a dramatic song, a sad song. My suffering started when I suffered abuse as a very young child, and then my torment began. That was when I started getting angry with God, because I didn't understand why that had happened to me. I became angry with my family, angry with my mother. This opened the door of my heart to drugs, tobacco and alcohol. I skipped classes to go drinking. At 13, there was a situation where the police found me lying in front of a house in an alcoholic coma. I started to only bring torment to my family. There is a picture of me in a cemetery when I was a teenager. The cemetery was a place I liked to stay the most. As I had this rebellion inside of me, I chose to do everything that would offend God so that I could annoy him. My friends and I used to go to cemeteries and break into the graves, entering and performing rituals inside them, trying to invoke spirits. We would go out on the streets, breaking everything that we could put our hands on. One time, we even entered the church where I went up on the altar and I spat at the image of Jesus. Everything I could do to offend, I would do it. I had a lot of anger inside me. I was the terror of the school because I dressed in all black, full of pimples and used heavy makeup. I wanted people to be afraid of me. That was what made me feel powerful. When I went out and people looked at me, frightened, that gave me even more strength to carry on being like that. The moment I started using drugs is what I consider the gateway to the beginning of the end of my life. When I used drugs for the first time, I realized I could skip reality. However, this was temporary because after the effects wore off, a deep depression came back, also due to the chemical effects of the drugs. So every time I had to use more and more to keep myself unconscious, to keep away from reality. There was a situation where I went to a carnival festival with friends, where I spent four days without sleeping, snorting cocaine non-stop, until I overdosed. The police came and took me to hospital. In that moment, I saw that I had reached rock bottom. After the overdose, I was then medicated and admitted in hospital. I thought, why did I not die? I could not imagine a future for myself. I was not able to look forward and think that I could have a husband, that I could have children. I always looked at myself and thought, this girl does not deserve I carried this pain because I thought, how could a child who suffered what I suffered have the opportunity to be a happy woman? The pain was so great I could not believe. And I tried. Inside of me there was a thirst to have a life, to have a new beginning, but I did not have the strength for that. That was the point for me where I did not know what to do. The only thing I thought was, I want to end my life. Then one day, I went home and took all the medicines that my mom had. I simply blacked out. I think I slept for three or four days straight. On my second try, I drank disinfectant, but nothing happened. This is because when I drank it, my throat closed and I had to spit it out. I was always thinking about ways. I wrote about five or six suicide letters where I wrote, Today, I am doing it. Today, I am doing it. This was also when the financial situation started to tighten up. I didn't know what to do or where to go. Some friends proposed for me to earn money legally. And at the height of my pain, in my despair, I thought, you know what, I have tried everything in this life, but nothing worked, so I will do this. I was decided, I'll do this. When I was on the bus, on the way to meet my friend, I felt very anguished. However, instead of turning right, the bus went straight ahead. I then realized I had taken the wrong bus. I got off the bus at the next stop and thought, I'll have to walk now. I got off in a hurry and as I was going to cross the road, I came across the door of the Universal Church. So, I thought, I won't meet my friend just yet. I will enter the church and ask God for forgiveness for what I am about to do. And then I'll throw myself in front of a bus. 
So I did that. I entered the church, sat on the last row and knelt down. When I did that, it was the first time that I had a very sincere conversation with God, like I'd never done in my life. As I was talking, it was like a weight was being lifted inside me. In that moment, I understood. It was like a blindfold was taken off my eyes. I said, he heard me. When I got up, a pastor came to the yacht and started the meeting. I didn't know that a meeting would start at that time. I had taken the wrong bus. I got off at the wrong stop. When he started talking, he spoke of my life in detail. He spoke about prostitution, about the drugs, the abuse. He mentioned everything. So I said, my God. I looked to the side, is there a hidden microphone here? Did anyone hear what I just said? Because he said exactly what I was going through. As he spoke, he called for people to come before the altar. I know that you are here, suffering, crying, and you just said that you're going to leave here and end your life. I want you here before the altar. I heard a clear voice in my heart saying, Child, come as you are. The clothes you are wearing do not matter. I want you like this. When I arrived before the altar, the weight of a lifetime fell to the ground. There, for the first time in my life, I could feel a bit of peace, like I'd never felt. The pastor finished preaching after speaking the word, and I left there already transformed. After I left the church, I took my things and went home. I switched off my phone as this friend of mine was calling me non-stop. So, I started to thirst greatly for the word because it was feeding me and strengthening me. I started to seek more and more, wanting to understand more of God. I wanted to know who he was, the one who had accepted me as I was. When I decided to be baptized in water, all the addictions left me. After I got baptized, I took the most powerful decision of my life. I don't want that anymore. Everything that brought me evil and polluted my life with God, I said, I no longer want any contact with this. When my first campaign of Israel arrived, I understood that what I needed was to have the Holy Spirit of God in my life. It was to have the mind of Christ, to think like him, to act like him. It was to have the strength that he had. My vanity used to be my everything. In that time, I used to think, I must make myself beautiful. However, I said, I want none of this. None of that matters anymore. I remember that in one envelope, I placed the financial sacrifice and in the other, I wrote on a piece of paper the word, friendships. When I went up on the altar and placed the envelope there, it was like the day I asked God to kill me and make me as a little child. I saw this little child being born. Not long after, soon after the campaign, I started the fast of Daniel. I was at home seeking, connecting myself with God. In that moment, I felt so little. I said, God, I am nothing. I am nobody. It was as if he had placed a mirror in front of me and showed me my size. And at the same time, the giant I could become when I was with him. In that moment, what I felt was nothing emotional, but a certainty inside me. I was sure that his Holy Spirit was inside me. I got emotional and I cried because I was singing. I was praising him, but that was not the assuring factor. I am receiving the Holy Spirit because I am crying. No, it was the assurance I had within. When I left there, I said, this is it, it has broken through. I left home and went to the church. I wanted to tell the pastor. I wanted to tell the evangelist. I said, where would the evangelism be today? I want to be there. I had a fire inside me, what I never imagined I would have. I then had the assurance that the Holy Spirit was part of my life. My financial life started to get better. I got married to the husband of my dreams. He's a prince to me, and he treats me like a princess. My children are very blessed children. They work with me. We do the same line of work. God had given us the direction to open a music school, because this would be a door to his house too. From that one, we opened another school and two other companies. 
The Holy Spirit brings the assurance inside me. I can go through a problem, but I know that with him, I will solve it. This is the Ariana without the Holy Spirit. This one here is the Ariana with the Holy Spirit. So, who made the better choice?